Chag Ha Sukkot Samayach. Yes, the end gathering here. In gathering here in the season, but right here, let's just reason for a moment here. I heard of a very interesting um, conversation going on, and we've been speaking about this, but, you know, some things, you know, don't really get popularized, you know, but it is the origin, you know, so what gets popular is not already, is not like the first or the original. We talk about the roots of something. So here we'd like to look at the roots right here in the season, time of in gathering here at the end of the year. You know, the in gathering, which is a type of the redemption of the ones lost now found, you know, coming from the east, the west, the north, the south, but coming to a center point, right? A center point. So here, let's speak about black, the black power movement. What is the origin? Or what, let's say it like this, what's the true, what's the true origin of the black power movement? Even this terminology and this phrase, black is beautiful. Actually, this, this um, vlog here has been prompted by something that we heard just recently, one of the podcasters or YouTubers, you know, I think it was either Moorish World, yeah, Taharka or Moorish World, he was talking about who originated, no, who popularized the the discussion was who popularized the black is beautiful, right? Many say that it was Stokely Carmichael with the black is beautiful, right? You know, or black, I'm, I'm, I'm black and I'm proud. The black and I'm proud. These are different phrases that started to identify at least more popularly and publicly black people, at least the peoples here that were brought over here, 400 year people here in the Americas, North, South America, and the Caribbean, Caribbean, the trans Ethiopian Ocean. Looking at the older maps, we see the ocean was called not the Atlantic or Southern Atlantic, but was referred to as the trans Ethi the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian Ocean. And therefore, when people speak about the transatlantic, that's anachronistic. Anachronistic is out of the proper time order. It's like something that we have changed the name. For example, we live over here, you know, we're residing over here in, in Brooklyn, New York, in this New York area, and there's Marcus Garvey, right, called Marcus Garvey, right, Boulevard, we call, I think Reed Avenue, yeah, and then on the next side is Troop, right, but now they've renamed it to Harriet Ross Tubman Avenue, so instead of Troop Avenue, so basically, some of us who live on these blocks right here in Bed-Stuy and Brooklyn can say we live, you know, between Marcus Garvey <laughs> and Harriet Ross Tubman or Harriet Tubman, right? Now, something that happened years ago before they renamed these streets, right? If we call it that and say, well, such and such happened between Marcus Garvey and and Harriet Tubman, Marcus Garvey, the Boulevard, Marcus Garvey Boulevard, and 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 Harriet Tubman <laughs> Avenue. But this is before it was named such. So anachronistic means like out of time. You know what I mean? Back then it was just I think um what is it? What they call it? Reed, no Reed Avenue, um um um, and they referred to it as troop. So that's that's what that means right there. Not to get all into that because we got something here to share, at least to start the conversation on this, right? So what's the origin, right? So what's the connection of actually the Ethiopian World Federation incorporated with this identification of us as black people? Many people would think that, well, black people start to identify themselves as black people in the 1960s. I would say that is correct popularly popularly <laughs> popularly you know on on a popular level this this is this is what i guess like in social media you know social media picks up on these sort of things because these sort of things can be popularized you know for example was it stokely carmichael right was stokely carmichael the one who brought the black is beautiful phrase to popular popularity <laughs> popular popular Popularity, popular, popularity, interesting, popularity, popularity, these, these words, English. Anyway, or was it, or was it um, James Brown, <laughs> James Brown? So who was it that really made 
this this identification of black now even now we have the black power movement we have black is beautiful say it loud and i'm proud you know like i'm black you know black power black power now the black power we did see a video with stokely carmichael for ones and ones who might not be familiar with who's who you know that we're speaking about so let's kind of begin off here we're talking about stokely carmichael right aka kwame ture Right, later on changed his name, adapted or, or adopted a an an African, you could say, um name, Stokely Carmichael becomes Kwame Ture. Oh, Chan. I downloaded some pictures. These are more of the historical pictures later on, you know, going forward to Africa, the continent, Mary McKee, but a very, very interesting history for ones and ones who don't know. You know, I think he's he's kind of popular, but really not so well known, you know, amongst us. He he should. He's almost like a kind of a Kwame Nkrumah. I was looking over some research here, and that just came to heart in mind. I don't know if any others of y'all's of yous have kind of seen that for yourselves as well, or picked up on that in spirit. He's like um, you know, in the movement, what he what he meant at least at that time for let's say black people let's use this term black now many people say well that black term our, our identification of who we are it keeps changing every you know like every decade or so once we're, we, we we you know we were this you know identifying ourselves as this or were identified now we have to even clarify that was it that we was really identifying ourselves all this time of all these decades and the name changed like people say well once you was negro and you know colored colored and negro seems to have overlapped and then you know we became black and then we became like black american and then we became like african-american so forth and so on and some will say well i'm just american and people say well we, we keep changing you know over the years like black people people say well why don't you make up your minds but were we really identifying ourselves or were we being identified as i think that only in maybe the past, you know, 50 years more consciously as, as, as the, I say the, the great, um, the base, you know, there's the pyramid and there's the base, you know, the base is like, like all the people, you know, the majority, at least of the people. And this is where the black identification of being black became more popularized. Hey, I got it. Popularized. They say Vox Populi Vox Dei. I don't know if you heard of that before. It's a it's a academic Latin kind of a phrase that's used. They often use it in the translation that the voice of the people is the voice of God. But it's actually an old Roman Latin phrase, Vox Populi, Vox, Vox, Voc vo, Voca, Voca, like voice. You know, the popular voice. You know, Vox Populi, Vox Dei is the voice of God. So in certain ancient cultures, they believe that whatever was popping, whatever was popular, you know, was like this is this like a God sin. You know, like whatever almost everybody agree, kind of that common denominator. We all agree, whatever they unite on, whether in psychologically, spiritually, you know, in their in their feelings and their thought, you know, becomes like that God sin. But anyway, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The, the popular voice during the 60s as far as to who we are basically terms like negro became even pejorative you know like insulting to say you know even amongst black people and colored these became like relics you know of the not too distant recent past we're just talking about the 60s the 60s moving in even more to the 70s so who really popularized you know this term um black is you know black is beautiful you know black is beautiful say it loud and i'm proud <laughs> and also the whole black power so we what we're doing is looking at these terminologies and ideas which are similar but not the same right this is where understanding comes from right understanding being able to discern between this and that though they're very similar so we have the terminology of black is beautiful we have the terminology of the, of the black power, you know. We have the, the terminology of we being identified as black. Where did this come from? So for most folks, right, and most people, even just casually looking at history, we'll say, well, that's the 60s. That's back in the 60s because black people, you know, the black movement, the black power movement was rising up. To what we heard, I think, Taharka mentioned most recently, um, 
politicize. I think he was touching on the politicization, the politicization, like when something becomes like is politically used, right? And not so much by the mass of the so-called people, I'm referring to the so-called black peoples here in the Americas, you know, in the Caribbean, but more, how can I say, more like a subtle, like a, a, it, was, it was more subtle. It was more like unconscious. We'll talk about it as politically now. But was it political to those? Was this political to James Brown? There's an audio that um, was played on um, Marsh World TV. I think it was a James Brown Audible, where it's it's alleged that he's saying that he he regrets, you know, the whole "black is beautiful" like popularizing this particular phrase. Others say that what, what was actually Stokely Carmichael, right? It was Stokely Carmichael that actually popularize the phrase and what they're confusing they're confusing here's the confusion here here's here's the understanding here's the discernment the confusion is that it's uh james brown right because of his you know music and soul <laughs> soul music and, and the power of the music you know what i mean music is like the opiate of the masses you know what i mean so everyone more or less cracked out so to speak on black is beautiful Right, the whole black is beautiful because he's the one who popularized that. But now when we talk about the black power on the political level, right? You know, black power, we you know black power. There's that video where Stokely Carmichael, I think it was a day when um Dr. King was supposed to speak to a group of um the people, black people. Forget exactly where, but it's on video. We can find it, and we'll we'll seek to follow up and share this. Anyway, um, King didn't make it there, so Stokely Carmichael took the stage. When he took the stage, he even spoke on this in this video that I seen. It kind of showed him speaking on what had happened, and then they showed the clip of the video. You know, this gathering of a lot of people there, a lot of black people, men, women. You know, a lot of men, but also a lot of women and children. It was a good kind of a family gathering, but it was a strong gathering. It was a strong gathering, and. You know, he started to say, you know, black power, black power. And the whole audience, men, women and children, you know, all kind of agreed. It was something that cut through all the different kind of even sectors, you know, of our, you could say, of our family. You know, in other words, the black woman was shouting it out. The children were shouting out. The older people were shouting out. The younger people were shouting out. The men were shouting out. Everybody was shouting it out. And, you know, Stokely, when he was recalling that incident you know he smiled about it and everything and said like you know once the you know like the so-called cat proverbially speaking was out of the bag once the cat was out of the bag was free you know you couldn't put the cat back in there you know what i mean in other words once once that was said once that was it was recorded by the media because we have uh, actual um film and video is out there once he had said that there was nothing taking that back so we have the black, quote, power, right, coinage, so to speak, you know, or popularization and possible coinage by Stokely Carmichael. While we have the black is beautiful, right, the whole black is beautiful um, popularization by James Brown. Now, what about the politicization, the politicization? How does it become political? Well, it was political from the very beginning. But let me say this right here. This was not the beginning. Now, I'm showing some pictures right here for those seeing the vlog, you know, of um, some of the personalities, significant people and who was speaking on Stokely Carmichael. And we've been showing some pictures of James Brown with different political leaders, with Nixon, with Sharpton and right here with um, uh uh, Bush, baby Bush, as they call him, right? He's holding up a T-shirt saying, killing is out, killing is out. <laughs> interesting. It's interesting because it actually has a quotation, quotation, killing is out, but we don't see the rest of the shirt. So I don't know what, you know, usually when someone have a quotation, they have an open quotation, a closed quotation. So I'm not too sure what the rest of the shirt actually says. Kind of curious now, but let's keep moving. Then we caught this right here. <laughs> you know, this is not about... Um, Cosby, 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 Khazab, Khazab. It's not about Khazab, Cosby. It's not about Cosby right here, right? But here's Cosby with um, Bush, with baby Bush, you know, skinning and grinning, 
you know, just, <laughs> yeah, just, just just let it be, let it be. The scroll back for a moment, let it be, let it be. You no, know, I was looking at that chandelier. The chandelier looked like um, something like, you know, we have an antelope or something on the wall in the background you see over there. This right here just looks kind of interesting, curious, you know, symbolically speaking. Now, then I caught this right here, historically Carmichael, the SDS, you know, black power, you know, um, now, you know, the, the word is not complete right here. So what you see on the screen is lack power. <laughs> this is interesting. We talk about words, you know, just words, you know, All right, not looking at words as good or bad, but understanding the, the pros and the cons, you know, the pros and the cons of these words, because today's generation has really fallen into the propaganda and the con game because they look at history anachronistically. They look at history out of order. I don't really see the the real order of history. So it's more according to, well, when I think about history, what makes me feel good? You know what I mean? What what makes me feel good? How do I want to look at the past in a way that makes me feel good? And I think it helps encourage me today. But it's not looking at the past honestly. I, you know, with you know, with mental, you know, mental honesty. Right, you know, just getting caught up in our feelings. It's like proverb is it Ecclesiastes that says that the wise man's heart is on his right hand side, but the fool's heart is on his, you know, left. If you think about that for a moment, you might understand what we're speaking about. So right here, this frame here says lack power, but the fuller of it, as you can see, it's black power. But now notice in the politicization and popularization. Right. And even a historical recording, this right here, I think, was a snapshot from a it was in a newspaper. We've seen the newspaper crop black power like this to basically imply lack power. Now, one will say, well, that's true because we black people, we lack power. So therefore, that's why we say black power. <laughs> that could get your confidence, you know, and that could be a good confidence pitch. You know what I mean? But what you're not understanding is the fullness of it. So you can see all the reporters here taking pictures. It seems like there's more reporters, you know, and, and au fait, as they used to say, in the audience than there are on stage. So we can't see the clear view of the stage. But in the frame here, you see there's all these reporters. Everybody got a camera. Everybody's taking pictures of of. of Everybody, or all the blacks. In other words, the whites are taking pictures of all the blacks right here. This is interesting because what we learn is that we need to document it for ourselves. I mean, I know photography and all that back in the day is probably kind of expensive, so forth and so on, but just the picture kind of tells you. So the picture, you know, speaks a thousand words, right? Then we caught this right here, another platform, right? Another platform. There's a couple of ones I think I recognize. It's that guy from England. Right, that guy from um, Michael, I think they call him Michael X, you know, after Malcolm X had come to visit that guy in England. He has a very, very interesting, very, very interesting story. This guy right here, this guy right here, if you if you notice his face, right, um, that's a very interesting story in and of itself. But this is speaking about black, the terminology, the origin of the terminology black, right, and the real origins of the so-called black power on one hand, right? And the popularization and the politicization of the terminology black. Black is beautiful. And therefore the identification, right, of being black, right? And black people within the political spheres of these here United States of America, but also so-called worldwide, like globally, but we prefer the term, term worldwide. Right, this terminology of black. So here, Gordon Park, Stokely Carmichael, and black power. Right, so James Brown, black is beautiful. That was a tune, right? Didn't he do a tune, black is beautiful? Right, Did, didn't he sing about that? You know what I mean? Was he not popular? I mean, was not almost everybody, well, a lot of bodies will groove into his music? And remember how important music is. You know, now, so here, this is from the Library of Congress. This is one of the Library of Congress pictures right here, the prints, photographs, the vision, so forth and so on. Same picture there. Then we caught this right here. This is a march right here. You can see some of the um, 
some of the banners, right? Some of the banners, the signs they're carrying, black power rate, the slogans, let's call it slogans. Black lackeys must go. So there's more and more now here in the 60s, moving forward to the 70s, with a an acceptance, a popular acceptance of the identification of the people, formerly called Negro, formerly called Colored, formerly called almost every name except a child of God, but now as black people, right? And we can see it in various different ways. And now as the 60s move forward, you can see this terminology even of black power, the black power movement going beyond the founders or the purported first proclaimers. I would say that Stokely Carmichael definitely is a first proclaimer, right? And he also assisted, but none of these people are really the origin of the term black. We can prove that the term black was used to identify black people, right? Popularly, but not super popularly. In other words, it was there, but it was not there. Right. In other words, it was there. Yes, almost thirty years, uh, thirty years earlier. Some of y'all know where we're going with this. We, the black people of the world, right? When did that originate here in the Americas among black people? We, the black, this identification of us as black people. Most people would say, of course, it was the sixties. I'll say, well, of course, it was the sixties when that was popularized, right? But often the seeds. You know, like if you, you have a farm, you have a plant, you ever do any, you know, natural nature things like that, you know, farming and planting, like when you put it, how does a seed grow? Does a seed grow best on top of the ground or do you have to like bury the seed below the ground? And for a while you don't see nothing, nothing grow, you don't see nothing sprout up, you don't see nothing come about. But give it time and the right, you say the right, um, 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 atmosphere you know like give it time like amount of sun rain so forth and so on give it time you're going to see something grow from those seeds so it's like the the scripture the bible speaks about you know that the seed like you're a fool if you don't understand that the seed has to die right <laughs> you know before it, it it grows and it produces any fruit just looking at the nature, the nature, right? The nature, the nature of it all. So spotlight on the civil rights movement. Now we get the quote civil rights movement. Remember the civil rights movement was what was going on, but the introduction of the, you know, um, the, the black power and proud to be black and black is beautiful. This now became the, the kind of advertising Right? The advertisement, the popularization of it. It was getting out to the public, especially through music. That's all we have to give it to James Brown, right? That he is the one that popularized right? the black identification with black people. But I think even he began to understand, especially based on the pictures that we show you, how he was even popular with the, the movers and the shakers right of this spiritual sodom in egypt you know of this babylon system you know this western gentile anglo-american world order right that is is run out of this whale of a country so the black power movement and civil unrest you see that civil unrest but notice the spotlight is on the civil rights movement you see that right there spotlight on so the civil rights movement was what was going on before that day that Stokely Carmichael, you know, got the crowd and the, the, the uproar and revved them up with black power. You know, what do we want? Black power. What do we want it now? What do we want? Black power. And he articulated even the logical and even some rational, we could say, reasons. And I want to point to Stokely Carmichael's logic and rationality because, see, it's when things become irrational. Right, it becomes irrational. Right, like when they say, "Well, Stokely Carmichael, um, he he popularized black is beautiful," but no, he he popularized or he helped to get into, you know, our veins black power. Right, but then the seeds of this identification of being black people was already preceded that by at least thirty years. 
And this is where the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, you know, comes in. This is what we like to share as we move forward. So most of this is here. You see this 1967. This is a, uh, something known as the movement affiliated with the students, student nonviolent coordinating committee. Right? What they call, um, um, I think, SNCC. This is where the SNCC came from. Right? SNCC. Black revolution is real. So black, you see, black revolution, black power, black beauty. Black is beautiful. You know, the seeds are growing. You see, it's growing. It's growing. But but when was it planted? When was this idea planted? I'll say this idea was planted by the Ethiopian. <laughs> Remember, there was J.A. Rogers, a scholar, a very excellent scholar. He says, wherever water touches land, you will find Ethiopians there. The implications that you will find black people. Now, it's interesting looking at the term Ethiopia, right? And also looking at the identification with black, also with Negro, looking at history, looking at documentation, looking at evidence going over thousands of years, going all the way back to the Greco-Roman times. But let's pause on that. Let's just show this right here. You know, so we have the Black Power 50th anniversary. Now, this right here didn't identify, okay, when do they say the 50th anniversary was? All right? Now, now it did say the Black Power. Black Power, this is the political aspect of that movement. Then we get the black is beautiful, which also lends great support to reinforce this political aspect. Now, the politics, see, it's the politics, or as Aina and Rastafari would say, it's the politics, right? You know, NOI, Nation of Gods and Earth, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the trick knowledge, right? It's when the trick knowledge comes in. How does the trick knowledge come in? Right? Do you even see that trick knowledge has come in? Now, notice right here, maybe some will get the connection here. I right? haven't read this book, would actually like to read this book and check it out. This is known as my Ashley um, D. Farm. If you've read it or whatnot, you know, give a comment, you know, if you, if you can. Good book, important book. Remaking Black Power. Mm, what? Remaking. Now, notice even the colors is in red, black, and green. <laughs> red black and green so you have to recognize the conscious as well as the subconscious penetration of these ideas right into our psyche you know and on some levels right we've accepted some of these ideas but on some level it's almost like while we were sleeping you know what i mean it's like somebody getting intimate with you getting in you know getting in deep getting in your heart and your mind while you're sleeping and you don't even notice this. But but what they're doing, excuse me, what they're doing, they're doing this, they're doing this consciously. They're doing this consciously. How black woman transformed an era. Mm, interesting, right? How black woman transformed the era. Now, this is a whole subject matter in itself. This is like another level. This is like another level of what we're speaking about here. Right? Because what has happened is that a seed was planted, something started to grow, right? Various branches, we, these branches, the branching off in different ways. But we're seeking to get to the very root of what we call the Black Power Movement. So the Black Power Movement that people see in the 1960s, the seeds were sown, we say, and we're going to prove in the 1930s. Now we have like the BLM, right? This is part of that transformation. Right. How it went from, say, black power was which was supposed to speak to we, the black people collectively, right, into the various other branching off. So we see something continually branching. It's like fractal geometry it keeps branching. It keeps branching. You know, what I mean, black lives matter. Right. So black power. Right. So here, we want to touch on the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right? This is now going back to the, the 1930s, right? Roughly circa 36, 37, 1930s. Here, this is the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated Constitution and Bylaws. We can give a link. I'd like to put a link for the official constitutional, the constitutional member membership website, as well as the executive committee for the first unit yes so here we have the ethiopian world federation incorporate constitution and bylaws 
right? When was it established? Here we have established August 25th, 1937. Headquarters, New York, New York. That time the headquarters was in Harlem. What's often referred to as the Black Mecca, right? The Black Mecca, or we could say like the Black Jerusalem, so to speak. Depends on your... Um, um, <laughs> Uh, you know your your Abrahamic religion, you know perspective. Let's put it like that. But let's talk about this for a moment. So, how do we prove this right here? Because first of all, we just want to show this is the Constitution, you know that was, and bylaws established August twenty fifth, nineteen thirty seven. Right it has a lot to do with the events that occurred back then. Let's go over here. This is related information. But we're like just to bring it forward right here. Okay, here we go. Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. My um, the key man in that effort, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. Right, you can see, born 1900, um, passed away 1940. So wow, like roughly 40 years. Right, roughly 40 years. A little up. We could say technically maybe a little less than 40 years. 39 years. Right can see some of the ad advert advertisement this link you know between we here in the Americas right and the Caribbean Caribbean the trans the Ethiopian enslavement trade you know over here in the Americas are you not as the children of the Ethiopians or Tamil children of Israel that's your Bible right there that's Amos 9 and 7 right Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan right here, 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 in our language, linguistics, the founder, the Mesrach, to say Bamarinya. Let's now, right here, this is his wife, a black American woman, right here, um, Dorothy, right? Dorothy Bayan, the three year old son, right here. Um, this is he, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan, his passing when he had passed, circa 1940. This is the official organ. Check out more at the Schomburg and give thanks to the Schomburg. Um, Save Ethiopia, right? Um, here we have the voice of Ethiopia, official organ of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. It is better, right, to die free than live in slavery, right? And this was the issue that spoke about the passing of its leader, right, and a friend, right, Dr. the late Dr. Malaku. Right, Emmanuel Bayan, right here, here, here. Some of the marches, activities, you know, all Harlem out for the defense of Ethiopia. I don't know if ones recall the events of the past. Often this history is ignored. Here we have Emperor Haile Selassie, you know, linking the Negro, so called the Negro. You have to remember the newspapers are mainly writing these things. This is back in the 50s. This is actually the 50s, from the 50s. Just to note the, the time, the Negroes, because this is still with the Ethiopian World Federation being one of the first that we've seen on the record, my organizations of a national and a international effect that whose membership identified, membership of so-called at the time called colored and Negro people identifying themselves as black. So that means that both those from the continent, from Africa, as she is now called, the continent is referred to as Africa, identifying themselves as black. So we have members from, from the Americas, the Caribbean, right, from Africa and other parts of the world, black peoples, right, and we're going to prove this as we go forward, but they all identify themselves as black, right, even though on a political level, we had that the African, right? We are Africans, right? Especially on the political, right, level when we going like worldwide. But anyway, but more directly in the organization, Ethiopian was the terminology because even then they understood and know and knew that the continent was called Ethiopia, just as the ocean was called the Ethiopian Ocean. So you see what happens when they change the names times and laws the confusions so this is why we have to kind of weed through these confusions so here going back to the time of the 50s we see Haile Selassie the first and the Ethiopians identifying themselves 
with us because even within the literature and the history we have Ethiopia being synonymous historically speaking with Negro and then as the consciousness grew with sowing that seed of black and blackness so we will say that the Ethiopian World Federation right sow the seed for black identification for black power and all the rest that initially let me point this out that initially came about because initially this whole thing was hijacked right like after the initial time when it first came forward we can see the hijack even right in front of us right and this might be what J james brown is so-called regretting you know about that you know aspect there you know as uh, you know hindsight they say is 2020 so we get a lot of hindsight here defend ethiopia against italian fascism this was the great um you could say black and white white and black conflict in other words against white supremacy right or really white inferiority posing and pretending to be supremacy with italian fascism because they were seeking to raise up rome it was going way back in their historical paradigm. So we're going way back to see what the real roots of things so we can better understand. You know, we can better overstand and we can better overcome what's going on today. Right. So this was this was the big division. Like, I don't know if you heard about what was the, what was the Sonny Liston or the there were certain fights, uh, boxing that was going on. Joe Lewis. You know, and they had even back in the the so-called back in them days, like the the twenties and thirties, that had its own, you know, its own racial, right? The racial, we could say the the the, the race war. People talk about the race war is coming, but the race war, race, what they call race, right? And see, it was instigated, right, by so-called. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the Anglo-American, and also the Anglo-European, and ones like Mussolini was on the tip of the spear, right? He's on the tip of the spear. I mean, he's even more important in other ways for all the religious folks. See, man, the religious folks at the time, they understood that it's this guy that, what's the scripture say? Um, where the, 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 the deadly wound of the, of the beast was healed, the deadly wound of the beast, of the beast system, was healed, right, during this individual's time. What he, what he did with the Lateran Treaty. If you want to find out more, look up the Lateran Treaty. Benito Mussolini and the Lateran Treaty, right, and what's really behind that. So all this kind of rah, 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 racial talk, anti-so-called black people talk, right, instigated the response even from black people in the Americas and the Caribbean, right, of what we know as the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. And that basically, um, you could say it, um, it succeeded, right, on the heels of the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. So we have like the, the black, quote, John the Baptist before he lost his head. Remember John the Baptist, lost, talking about Marcus Messiah Garvey, Right here in these here Americas, right? This is all about consciousness, a voice. Remember the Bible says it says a voice crying in the wilderness, right? It doesn't say a man. It doesn't say no. It says a voice, right? There was a voice crying in the wilderness, right? Prepare ye, prepare y'all the way, right? The way of the Lord, right? Our black Lord and Savior, you know. So. Invasion, right? The invasion of Ethiopia, the pivotal, this pivotal event right here, even the prophecy of the Nagusin against the King of Kings of Ethiopia. It is us today, it will be you tomorrow. The match you struck in Ethiopia, the flames and the fire will burn Europe in five years, right? That prophecy, five years to the very day, right? So looking at some of the historics, of that event and we can see that that was basically 1930 right the 1930s circa 1935 right circa 1935 give thanks new african 77 wordpress.com right what they was doing with, with the children in, in eritrea you see they were getting even the african the black africans on all that fascist rhetoric you know that fascist rhetoric 
You know, um, you know, we, we over here would say, oh, some black KKK. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, some black guy with white face, right? But what they was doing over here, like even Hitler himself said that he learned all of that racist and, and anti-Semitic Semit, Semitic so-called rhetoric, right, from the Americans. He learned all that racial stuff from, he, he got that from the Americans. Mm. Which shows you that even when we see this go so-called global or worldwide, where they are deriving it from, how important this North country, the so-called Americas and the Caribbean is in the big scheme of things, right? Then we have the League of Nations, the whole League of Nations aspect, not to get much into that and the king upon the throne, right? Fulfilling even that biblical aspect. And many black people back then understood and knew that. I'm talking about the church, the church people even understood and knew that then. How did they forget it? What happened? See, it's the politicization of the movement. The lion is not only roaring, you know, so as things start to turn around, so we see the Ethiopians that was black, right? When it says uh, swinish Mussolini to flight, that was, we could say, the, the white racists or the, you know, so-called white supremacy. I say so-called because that's not even a truth. Right, it's a lie. The more people say white supremacy, the more they repeat the lie. So I say the inferiority is posing as supremacy. You know, I'm supposed to tame you to my ways. Right, that's what they say. Right, <laughs> seventeen thousand Italians were killed recently by the brave, relentless Ethiopian soldiers. Now, even today to say that, some don't like it. When we say that they prefer it saying that 17,000 black people were killed by white people. Oh, how sad. Let's do a Jeffrey Dahmer series. <laughs> and no, we haven't talked about that. Cause what is there to talk about? Right, right here. The stormy road to freedom. Right? Stormy road to freedom. Right? The Ethiopian World Federation. Look, 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 look. You see? With sword in hand. Maybe that's why you, you never heard about. Right? You never heard about it, right? The Ethiopian World Federation cutting off these snakes, right? Look, the lynching, the prejudice, right? The united action, the Ethiopian World Federation, honesty, justice, true brotherhood, right? For freedom, right? Right, freedom, freedom of the children of Africa. What? That's the goal. You see the goal? The goal of the Ethiopian Federation. Why haven't you heard about the Ethiopian Federation? Why is there so much confusion Right or has has been sown against it because it's part of the COINTELPRO, so part of the COINTELPRO to stop the rise of the Black Messiah. You hear, you heard to stop the rise of who? The road to freedom is filled with vicious enemies, but the World Federation, talking about the World Federation of Black People, and this is talking about the Ethiopian World Federation from the time moves on with the banner high and the sword what the what 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 the sword of unity ever sharp and swinging left to right join the ethiopian world federation and help free the children of africa now this is in the 1930s brothers and sisters all right we're talking about the 1930s here all right and we're talking about at the same time with this same organization is the first that we notice and observe on record to coin, right, and to put into effect with its worldwide membership of, we could say, black people, the identification that we, the black peoples of the world, not we, the colored people, right? We've been there, done that, not we, the Negro people. We've been there, done that, but we, the black people. But then, this was like 30 years before, right? We get the Black Power movement as it was in the 60s. Black is beautiful, the 60s, the 70s, and all of this and that. You know, and then we can see how when it was politicized, how it began to swerve, right? How it began to swerve, you know, swerve. And then it comes down to what it is today, you know, the BLM. And I mean, what more can we say? Because if you don't already know about that, check out Judge Joe Brown and... um. And the real Dana with the data. Mm -hmm. Point you to Judge Joe Brown and the real Dana with the data on that. 
we like the perspective, the overview that they give on these historical facts, you know, and even the simplification of it. So once you can get it and then you can go into more deeper research if that is what, you know, that is what you seek to do. Ethiopia not conquered. The voice of Ethiopia. Right will prevail. Save Ethiopia. These are the, you can say the, the rallying calls, the rallying cries. This was what, five cents everywhere. This newspaper is dated Saturday, September 24th, 1938. Right? So we're talking about real world. It's about real world struggle. I mean, real world struggle, right, to the point of black men, right, and no doubt even some women willing to go over to fight and ready to fight against this cracker, fight against this, this inferiority, faking the funk of supremacy and killing, right, what it says, come to kill, right, steal, right, and destroy, Right. Will Europe answer the emperor's, the king of kings plea before it perishes? And we talk about the real biblical, scriptural king of kings. See, this, this all this, right? All this. The emperor of Ethiopia and his prophecy, right? You, you need to understand the prophecy. We'll leave this on the screen. Hopefully, ones can see this right here, here, here. You can actually search this out. Let's zoom, zoom in on this for a moment, right? Zoom in on might as well, right? Might well say, I told you so. His Imperial Majesty, Gormawi Nagusinagas, Kadamawi Hala Selassie, Nagusinagas Ethiopia, Hala Selassie, the first Emperor of Ethiopia, or King of Kings of Ethiopia, gave a clear and historic warning at Geneva in 1936 when he spoke to the assembly of mainly, we could say, white, you know, nations, you know? His prophecies are being fulfilled literally day by day. And the world must remember his ringing words. I assert that the problem submitted to the assembly today is a much wider one. People say, this is just a, Ethiopia was invaded by Italy. This is just a little small. No, 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 no. This is a much wider one, black people. It is not merely a question of the settlement of Italian aggression. We can say Roman. Let's go way back to the roots, the biblical roots. Roman Right, Roman aggression. It is collective security. Collective security for who? Collective security for who? For we, the black peoples of the world. And therefore, for the, you could say the world, the world community as a whole. Because, you know, as, as go black people, there go the world. You got to recognize right? it is the very existence of the League of Nations. It is the confidence that each state is the place in international treaties, basically calling out, right? Um, we said the white man, the American, the natives would say that the white man speak with forked tongue, calling them out, right? And you can see that strategy even in the, the early part of the civil rights movement, you know, with ones like. Um, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. initially, and then others like even Martin Luther King later on calling them out. You say this, right? You say one thing, but you do another. Let the whole world, let everybody see. And that's, that is what right, was a catalyst right, for initial stages of change. Right? But then it's the politics. How did all that get turned around? It is the value of promises made to small states that their integrity and their independence shall be respected and ensured. It is the principle of the equality among states on the one hand or otherwise the obligation laid with small powers to accept the bonds of vassalship. In a word, it is international morality. That is at stake. Because what is it? The white man speak with forked tongue. Because many will say, it's not about race. We all are human beings. You know, it's everything. It's like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, they'll speak this stuff. They'll talk this talk. But then when it comes down to these situations, they try to make it seem like this is not what it's about. This is what it's about. If that talk was real, then the king of kings wouldn't even have to be putting them on notice like that and, and prophesizing to him as he did. Right? And then we would not, not see the world the way it is, it would have been a whole new world. But have the signatures 
append it to a treaty value only insofar as the signatory powers have a personal, direct, and immediate interest involved. You know, playing that politics. He was calling out the politics, the politics of the time, but also pronouncing divine judgment. And that divine judgment was World War II. So how often they tell you about, well, you know, World War II, if they listen to Haile Selassie from Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, we would not even have, so many lives would not have been lost. The, 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 things would not have been the way they were. World War II, right? And everything that came out after that. So it says God and history. But what came out after that, if you can discern it, was the Hebrew and the biblical prophecy. God and history will remember your judgment. No subtlety can change the problem or shift the grounds of the discussion. But note what the King of Kings, Karmawi Nagus Nagas is saying right there. He's saying that no subtlety can change the problem. This is what they've done, even here in the Americas and the Caribbean with the politics. They've used subtlety to change what the real problem is, right? <laughs> or shift the grounds of discussion. So the grounds of discussion that our ancestors were about then, we're not about now. Most don't even understand. That's why I talk about the anachronistic things out of time. You know, even when one saying that Stokely Carmichael started The Black is Beautiful. No, it was actually the singer, James Brown. Stokely Carmichael gets more credit for the coining of the black power aspect. Now we're getting here to the roots of the Ethiopian World Federation and the identification of us as we the black people. But how that seed... Right? It, it seemed like it took almost like 30 years for the growth. We're going to show the evidence of that, John ja Willen, Yah Willen, in this particular vlog here. At a time when my people are threatened with extermination. Did you know that because of what his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie said right, at the League of Nations, the word genocide, that's another vlog, we're going to bring that one forward, Yah ja Willen, that the word genocide was coined. The word genocide was coined. Because of what Haile Selassie said in that pure language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia in the Amharic language. And the translator seeking to translate it. And this is where the word, the term genocide. The word genocide came in because of what was going on with the Romanist fascist antichrist invasion right, of Ethiopia. Mm. Are you not as a children? of the Ethiopians and the Meo children of Israel. At a time when my people are threatened with extermination, when the support of the League, right, of mostly Gentile nations, right, may ward off the final blow, may I be allowed to speak with complete frankness, without reticence, in all directness, such as is demanded by the rule of equality. Now it goes on in the next page. Right, it definitely goes on in the next page. But we're just showing that right here, here, here. Even Revelation speaks about, right, you know, that rider, right, the rider on the white horse, not the pale horse. Behold, a pale horse cometh, right, but it was that rider, right, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, right. So Ethiopian World Federation sends signatures representing over 8 million people. Did you see this right here? Representing who? How many million people? Eight million people. Right? You know, eight million people. Right? Eight million people. Says so foreign Ethiopian foreign minister dead. Okay. You know, God in history will remember your judgment. All these things going on at one and the same time. Right? It's just where the historical record. Right? Mussolini admits that Ethiopia is not conquered. So you see people say, oh, Ethiopia was conquered, or Ethiopia this, but even Mussolini on the record, right, the one who was leading off the whole invasion and everything, right, the tin pot Caesar, Kaiser, right, even Kaiser, Kazari, Caesari, Cesari, had to admit that Ethiopia was not conquered. You know what I mean? It was not conquered. So here, here, here. Here, 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 just to show this prophecy right there. So here's what we're speaking about. Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Let's let's bring this up right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Let's just do this like this. Let's bring it out over here. Let's see if we can go over here. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, do we have that right there? Oh, we, oh, we actually have that. Okay, it's in the gallery. Good, thanks. There's the gallery right there. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So this is this is the preamble, 
All right, that's the Constitution book. You see the green right there, very same Constitution book. This is the preamble. Let's see if we got a, a clearer picture, all right? A, a little bit clearer, all right? It's an old book, all right? An old document. So we highlighted that there just for the emphasis, the preamble of the Constitution and bylaws of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, established the 25th of August, August 25th, 1937. Look how they identify us. Look how we identify ourselves, our ancestors. We, the black peoples of the world. So what's the origin of the black power movement? Historically speaking, can you show me anything before 1937? And then between 1937 and say 1960s, 1967 and 1977, this is where we now get some of the, 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 the fruit so to speak, from the seed that was planted, some of the branching off from this root idea. So when people talk about, well, our identity was changing and changing and changing, not, not for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. See, that organization served its purpose, right? And it continued to until it ran into the forces of COINTELPRO, right? And the British conspiracy against we black people. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have to point that out. What, what went on for our people in the Caribbean, the confusion that was sown. Remember, COINTELPRO means counterintelligence. And this is what's also happening with much of the Ethiopian World Federation You're outside of the constitutional membership and the constitutional executive you know, committees that are seeking to restructure things even today. That's why we're going to put a link in this for ones and ones who want to get you know, the right information. You know, Because knowing the history... And seeing what we're seeing today, you know, we understand why a lot of ones are making erroneous, you know, decisions, right? Sincerely, right? Because they lack the history. They lack the context of what's going on. They are being like hoodwinked and bamboozled, you know, through even the social media, you know? We don't try to put a lot in social media besides the teaching. But this right here, we saw how all this was connected. And we hope that this is a good opportunity to connect the proverbial dots. We're leaving this on the screen so ones can read this for a moment. We, the black peoples of the world, in order to... And did you know that there's some people that don't like... Some people who identify and maybe identify as black people who don't like the fact that the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated preamble is we, the black peoples of the world. Some find that offensive. I don't know it's some black people. Now, for other peoples of... Uh, you know, that's 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 outside. You know, that's almost profane in the sense. Understand the context of what's going on here and the movement, right, of job people, right? We, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. And we have this right here, right? This is, you know, within the Constitution book right here. I think this is probably even a, a little clearer. Yeah, a little clearer. Let, let, let that remain on the screen for a moment. Some, some have even proposed that this should be amended. Why should it be amended? Notice the historicity of this here. We're talking about 1937. And we just showed you some of the other newspaper articles from the time, from back in, you know, 1930s, right? Where they even got up to 8 million, right? 8 million signatures, right? In defense of Ethiopia against the Italian, you know, Romanist fascists. We could say the pseudo wannabe white supremacists, you know, intentions back in them days. So we can see the effect of this organization. Why haven't people been told about black people? Right, because of all these other so-called black things. You see, the uniqueness of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, it was saying, we the black peoples, giving us that first level basic identification, but then bringing us into the fullness right, of being Ethiopian in its true ancient, right, in a true ancient context. Right? I know I hear one talking about, oh, Ethiopia come from Greek. If, if you hear people talking about Ethiopia come from Greek, that means that they have a limitation, right, of their intelligence getting to the roots. Ask them whether they speak, 
you know, the Ethiopian languages, right? And we can go into that as we've gone into that elsewhere, the real origin of the term. You know how the white man will go someplace and he will hear the people say something and he will, will now try to coin it in his understanding. Basically, this is what the, 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 the Greeks of the time basically did. Tob, Tobia, Tob and Tobia. Mind is the indigenous origin of that term that comes to us in the West. Because much of our information that is generally given in the West comes from, you know, the whole Greco-Roman, you know, even the politics, the Greeks, democracy, the Romans, Republic. And over here we got Democrat, democracy and then the Pledge of Allegiance says to the Republic we stand. So is it a democracy? Is it a Republic? I mean, what's going on? But it's a Greco-Roman system. You know, that's why the Biblical prophecy likens these things to the beast. But for all of that being said, just want to show this right here. Also, once again, when are we speaking about? We're speaking about this right here. We're speaking about this approximate day, you know, this, 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 this uh, time, right? When we're talking about August 25th, the 1930s. We showed you the newspaper articles as well. So to answer the question concerning the real origins Right. What are the real origins of what is so-called black power? Right. The black power movement, the black is beautiful movement of the 60s. We say it goes back to the 1930s. Right. And it goes back to an unsung organization. Right. That is struggling right now, you know, even for its, you know, for its, uh, it's 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 survival, right? Because there's a lot of sincere ones, right, who are doing a lot of popular stuff out there, but misrepresenting the integrity of the organization. And from some of our initial research, and we could get into more of this in detail as we move forward, that they have been somewhat touched by the COINTEL Pro information and disinformation. They don't really know how to properly, you know. Um, divide and discern this this word of truth, our history. They're getting caught up in a lot of anachronisms, you know, not really understanding that even the black power movement that comes up later on was without that guidance of the original, right, the origin of it, you know. It had a good intent, right, but it was easily jacked by the Gentile system, the white, you know, system of things, you know. It was jacked. Right. And even utilizing many black faces, you know, use a lot, a, a lot of black people, right, who are very sincere, very emotional, but could be conned because they wasn't doing their due diligence. Right. And this is the history of it. That's why you get a lot of ones who were involved then as they, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, they make a lot of regrets later on because things that they didn't know at the time, they were just caught up like a lot of youths and a lot of people today on the feeling of things. Somebody posts you a post, sends you a text, sends you a video or something. And, you, ah! and that's something that we read about in the Protocols of Learned Elders of Zion. That will be done. In other words, you know, you know, let them talk themselves silly. You know what I mean? In other words, all kind of people news, people information, also the distractions because they're seeking to set about their kingdom, their government, right? And we have lost ours by and large because we lost touch with the real roots, the roots of black power, the real roots of black power, the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Let's put it simple like that. This is your Wendem Wendem, Yadinos, Yadin, Yadin here, you know, duly elected national president, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated 2022. You know, we have our local elections coming up. So, you know, we're speaking on this now while we preside in this office. Um, and we hope that we are doing due diligence to properly fulfill, you know, fulfill our, our oath of office. You know, we hope others will become interested, at least in learning the history. I think the history, the historical part of it is the beautiful part of it. Because the more we learn about the history of the Ethiopian World Foundation Incorporated and the real history between the 1930s and the 1960s, right? Then we can move from the 1960s and come to the 2020s. And, you know, they say hindsight is 2020. We can have a clear view, you know, and be able to discern, you know, what is from what from what be not so what it be like 
like share and subscribe brothers and sisters hit that notification bell hit it hit it on right if it's already on hit it off and hit it on again because sometimes you know they be doing this shadow banning also be sure to sign up with the youtube rastafari israelites we have our our um the evening podcast it's more getting to our foundation in the holy place you know we the black jews of the lion of the tribe of judah yehuda so here 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 in the season the season of tabernacles of in gathering it's a prophetic for the in gathering of i and i people from all these foreign strange lands strange ideology and returning to the center right of who we be shalom chabarim shalom chag samiach happy 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 feast yes i chag hasukot samiach